I come to save the day. The Mighty House crew is on the job. This is Mighty House. Hey, we're back, and today we're going to talk about heat pumps versus air conditioners. Kind of what's the difference, but not really, because we're not going to get into the AC too much. But we want you to hit that subscribe button, dingle on the bell, and that way you get notified the next time we've got uh, a new video coming out. So let's kind of get into the heat pump thing. It's uh, not new. It's a technology that's mm -hmm. been around a long time, but it's just now starting to find its way into people's homes. And so uh, really, what's the difference between a heat pump and an AC? There. Well, so the biggest thing that you've got here when we talk about heat pumps is what we're really talking about is more for how you heat your home. The benefit to a heat pump is that you're not burning a fossil fuel to create heat to heat your house. In you're theory. just doing an air exchange for heating. But it will work in two directions and it will give you cooling as well. Right. Whereas an AC compressor that you have outside your house, it just takes warm air from inside the house, throws it across your evaporator. Then when it absorbs the heat from the air at that point, the refrigerate transforms from a cold liquid to a hot vapor. Then it goes back to the compressor. It gets compressed. <laughs> then increasing that pressure, it makes it go colder. And then it goes right. through the liquid line. It sounds complicated. Yeah, it is. And it is. And I'm going to leave it at that because... It was about the most generic way I could explain this. <laughs> don't need a bunch of emails from all the HVAC guys. Right. Point is, is that no matter how efficient your HV, your air conditioner is, you still have a furnace in your house. Correct. And if you're using gas-forced air or burning oil, you know, a boiler system or anything like that, this is what we're trying to get away from. And this came about more with climate change now. Sure. Sure, it does. So let's kind of get into this. Um, so the, this is just the AC side. So now um, we're burning fuels. Let's see. And then the climate change. Let's hit the climate change one. There we go. Right. So, so this now is... Now everybody with their concerns with climate change, the heat pump's becoming a really big thing. Uh, a number of states have already banned uh, gas services to new homes. Right. To single family. Not necessarily to multifamily, but to single family and stuff. Um, it started in California, but New York's going that way and, and everything else. And that means natural gas and propane. Now, I have an issue with that because my house is super energy efficient. I have a heat pump water heater. Right. Which is awesome because it cools my garage <laughs> while it's, it's out there running right now, cooling my garage down. I did. I don't know why, but I did not even look into a heat pump for my AC. Really? Yeah, I have an 18 sear. I went... Real sky high on that, so it's a high, it's, it's a variable speed, which is great because like right all day it just maybe runs at ten percent. Sure. So it's still good, but I never really even looked into a heat pump for that. Um, because you never really need, you don't really need the heat. Do you have a furnace? We have an air handler with electric strip heat in it. <laughs> so the electric strip heat, they tell you, electric strip heat is one hundred percent efficient. Uh -huh. So is your toaster. Right. <laughs> but you still got to burn, you know, you still got to use up electricity to do that. Now, sure. that said, I've not turned the heat on in nine years. Right. See, that, I mean, so. that's what I'm saying. So you probably didn't think about it it's because you don't need it. You know, if you were. No, but where I was heading with that. So I have super efficient electric AC. Mm -hmm. I have super high efficiency electric water heater. Right. But I put a propane tank in the front yard. I got a 500 gallon propane tank. Because I what? love cooking with gas. See, there you go. That's why you did it. So, yeah. And it's also, I live in a hurricane area, so I have a dual fuel generator okay. to keep some lights and ceiling fans on. I'm not going to be able to run the AC. It's not that big a generator. It didn't go all out nutty. But no, so to me, it was, it's still a trade-off. Again, like when we talk about other things, yeah, it's in a perfect world. Let's get rid of this and everything will be, you know, beautiful. Right. Not there yet. Right. <laughs> I don't right. have cheap, reliable power everywhere. Right. Right. So you, you could have had a generator with diesel, but now you're getting, going out and de getting diesel fuel and loading it with that and, and testing it. And that you have to main, maintain that. Having the propane right. tank, you know, solves a lot of that problem. And then if you have a grill, you, wanna, you, wanna, you still want natural gas or, or propane for your grill? Well, that's it. I got propane going to the grill, my range, yeah. and my generator. Right. That's... 
So, and that's so am I am I contributing to climate change? Yes. Yes. When but, I use my stove and my grill. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, or you take your truck to the, to the restaurant. You're still going to, same thing. Yeah. You, you're burning gas there, too. So. Um, okay, so we just got, I'm sorry, I just took us so far off topic. Right. So using an air, uh, air source heat pump, how does it really work then? So it, we kind of get into this. So we, you kind of touched on this a little bit. You're going to take the heat and you're going to push it over here. And then that, it, all you're doing is transferring that temperature from one side to the other through this right. compressor. So like your AC system, it, it does the one side. It takes the heat from inside the house and moves it outside, right? But now it, it gets cold out. You can take the heat from outside and move it inside. So, okay. And so the one thing that we always had a problem with, and this goes, you know, they've been around 20, 25 years easily. Oh, yeah. Um, the early heat pumps, we, when it got down to five below zero in Chicago, we weren't getting heat out of the heat pumps, and we had to use electric strips. Correct. Or electric baseboard heat as secondary. They've addressed a lot of that. Right. They, yeah, so they, they go down to the 25 below now. Get to about, yeah. So, yeah, so they're way better than they used to be. Right. And you have to understand, too, a lot of the ones we were installing years ago, we were doing R11, maybe R13 insulation in the walls. Uh -huh. We weren't doing blower door testing. <laughs> we didn't have, you know, high, you know, the windows weren't as good. So you put this into a new house and, yeah, you're, it's great. It's, it's going to be good. Now, if you're used to electric heat already, when you go over to the registers, that it, you're not going to have that nice warm heat coming out like if you've got a gas furnace. So right. uh, electric heat still feels cold when you go over to the registers. But in actuality, it's, it's putting out, what is it, 70 or 80 degree heat. It's not doing mm -hmm. 130 like a gas does. So Yeah, and the gas just gives you that hot spot. And then, it, you know, too, as soon as it shuts off, you start feeling cold. Right, right. So oh. by using the heat pump and transferring this, it works through all seasons. Now that they've got the newer technology, you can use these in the northern climates. Before, we used to tell people, uh, you know, if you're north of Tennessee, I, would, I probably wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, we shied away from it. But again, with, with how we're doing the building envelope now, yep. uh, you know, the, the, the way we're insulating and everything else, I wouldn't have a problem doing it up now in Chicago. I Correct. still know how it works in Manitoba, but, you know. Right. Yeah, and uh, they're supposedly working. So where does that electricity come from, Kev? That's another thing to think about. So is it solar? Are you using wind? The electricity is a little more efficient. If you're on a, on a system that's still using coal and has coal plants, you know, right. uh, the electricity is probably not going to save that much on your, on your climate change. But over time, as, as uh, the systems change and people are moving off of the coal, it's going to create a cleaner system. And, and building a home that's all electric, almost like what Rich did, or you're using a heat pump system to heat and cool mm -hmm. your home, uh, the efficiencies are a lot better, and it's going to, for long term, it's going to be better for the climate. Um, right, and, and that's why I think as long as we, and part of the whole thing with using, uh, you know, re renewable electric sources is it increases your efficiency. Like you said, it's, you know, if we were at a one-to-one -one before, now we're doing much better because it's, right. you know, we're not burning all that other garbage. Right, right. So. Let's go into the efficiencies there real quick. If you've got one of these, stick, you've seen these stickers before, it comes on everything. So that mm -hmm. is the HSPF. And what's that, Rich? I don't know. What was that? <laughs> Heating season performance factor. Factor. Yeah, I know. I, I wrote that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I knew what it was. <laughs> but that one's actually kind of confusing because it actually tells you it's the total space heating provided by that heat pump. Over divided by uh, over a season divided by the total electrical used. Right. So what they're telling you that efficiency on that label is that if you're if you're heating up to ten, that you're only going to put ten into it. Right. Like I, that I don't understand that label that well. Right. So your efficiency it, it's it's how much it's going to cost you for the season uh, per running hour. So that's it's roughly going to cost you ten bucks. Versus the rated, uh, the cooler rating is 19 for that system. So, um, so you're, that's what it's going to cost you per Half hour. The money. money. Correct. Correct. So what I like to see. No, is, this is cooling. Is, like we said, it's it can, it's going to cost you 20 bucks for cooling to cool the house, and and, and 10 bucks for heating. 
That's what it says. Just say it. It's what it says. Just say it. <laughs> I don't know. But I like the other label, the COP. Yep. The next so one when, is. When you have your coefficient of performance, that is actually, it's either written that way or one has a, you know, an FU, like an annual fuel utilization. Yep. Anyway, that, that's the problem. They have too many numbers. Right. So, but this one's telling you the COP is what you're getting out of it. So if I put in one kilowatt hour of electricity, I should get out one kilowatt of cooling or heating. If that's the case, it's a 100% efficient. Right. But what's really great with the new ones is that you put in one kilowatt of energy and you can get two kilowatts of cooling or three kilowatts of heating. That's two to 300% efficiency. Correct. And that's what, and that's they what we're them. looking for. Right. You, you're not going to get that with uh, any type of gas. Gas forced air, right. electric resistance. Nothing. None of it. Nothing. So that's, that's how you cool your garage for free, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, I put that in there not thinking it was going to cool my garage. I put it in there knowing that because of our Bob from Northbrook. Right. You know, he, he was said that. Tankless water heaters ain't, are, aren't all they're really cracked up to be, that a large tank maintained, blah, 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 and the hybrids, and, right. and I went that route. That thing runs constantly. Like, yeah. I'm surprised how much it runs, just a little fan. Right. But it's still, the operating cost on that thing is supposedly $600 less than a 50-gallon standard electric water heater. Wow. Like 600 a year less. It's insane. But it's got a condensate line that goes outside, so I got water, so it's dehumidifying the garage, which is not a bad thing in Florida. <laughs> no. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with it, you yeah. know? So that's good. So that, that's the, uh, the COP rating. So you could have up to 400. I, I was read, or you told me it was like up to 400% efficient on yeah. uh, some of these systems. Yeah, and that's if, you know, it's how you change your phases in the other electric. But yeah, that's still, it's amazing that they can do that. Right. So the next thing is, can you really use it in colder temperatures? So here's a picture of uh, a system installed. It's in the winter. Like we said earlier, it goes down to 25 below now. Um, and it's in a doghouse. Yeah. You just got to keep the snow off of it so that it can breathe. So No, and that was a, a concern of ours years ago. I remember on my architect's house, I did a job and put a, a heat pump on there and had to use the electric strip heat, like I said earlier. Uh -huh. just, it just wouldn't quite keep that room warm, but... Now, a whole different animal. Yep, the newer They're systems just... today are, are really good, and wouldn't I wouldn't hesitate to tell anybody that's in the U.S. to go ahead and, and do it, any part of the country, even you right. know Maine, it would work great. Uh, Minnesota, the, the really cold areas. Well, and it's crazy, like the small Mitsubishi models, like the ones with the head units and that, that was one of the biggest problems, is most people didn't like the head units in the room. Right. But you can get ducted units so that it airs an air handler or a distribution box in a ceiling or whatever, and then mm -hmm. you just have vents in your room. But the traditional s systems, and, and if you watch movies, whatever, anything in Europe, you'll see the head units up on the wall. You know, that's right. just how they're done. Right. So you can get around some of that, but no, it's it just works so much so much better than they did 20 years ago that... Yeah. So much it's, more it's efficiently. Time. Yes, <laughs> way more efficiently. Yeah. So there's, there, there's the heat pump part of this. So we, we've talked a lot about from air systems, but there's also mm -hmm. you can have a heat pump and, and do some d different systems with geothermal there too. So, right. Um, That's your ground source heat pump. Right. So you've got the, the ground ones right in here, that one, that one, and that one, uh, which is the, what's that, the vertical? Then you got the mm -hmm. ground loop, and then you got the horizontal systems, and you can also put them in ponds. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, depending on your property, if you've got the land, the horizontal is probably the least expensive way to go. Correct. Um, if you have a very tight lot, the vertical, which I know you've done some vertical systems, yep. Ron. Yep. Um, and most of them uh, in the Chicago area, we're driving uh, three to four. Yeah, use four of those vertical systems down two, three hundred feet. So um, they they work really well, and every everyone we've installed, the, the people absolutely love them. And especially in the summer, the electric bills are not that bad. They're you know a fraction of what their normal AC bills were. So it it's a really works. A, it's a great system. So I think something else that people need to realize, too, is it's not a system that turns on and off like your old air conditioner or your old furnace. These things will typically run constantly because mm -hmm. they do it gradually. Right. You know what I mean? It's going to constantly run, but it's not running full blast. 
it's just going to be running at maybe 5%, 10%, maybe 15% to maintain. The only time it's really going to kick up is maybe you set a thermostat that, you know, when you get home, you want to cool it down, or when you go to bed, you cool it down a few degrees, it will pick up pace. Right. But other than that, it's just going to run. You're not going to hear it, you're not right. going to notice it. It's yep. just there. Yep, because the, the blowers, if you've got forced air, uh, those are going to be, you know, variable speed, so they run really slow. If you've got them set up to do uh, hydro, and you could, you could actually have the tubing running through your floor if you want to have the heat it that way. So mm -hmm. then you have zero noise because it's just all, it's all hydronic systems. So right. and they, they really work well. So with that, uh, is there anything else you want to kind of cover with this? I, I think we've kind yeah, of this. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. We'll check them out and yeah, I get mean, back to you on anything. I, I think overall, we wanted to kind of talk about this is because it's something that's been around a while, but I think it's really finally starting to make it into the residential arena and it's starting to be used more and more especially in the southern states, you know, but people need to know you can actually use it in the northern states of the, of the country now, too. So, yeah, I it's, think it's the really next big thing we're going to have to do is is start educating, you know, architects and builders. Yep. You know, I mean, it, it's it's just not your normal system and the house has to be designed with it in mind. Correct. Know, so correct. We oh, use good. furnaces with gas. And that's the way it's always been, and that's the way it's always going to be. America. That's America. Yeah. <laughs> I walked in your front door. I knew right over you. You need 100,000 BTU furnace. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Until next time. Keep it square and level. There you go. Boom, done. Just like that. Oh, dingle there the bell you and, like uh, you know, subscribe. All that fun stuff, too. Should have said something about coal. I carry my coal in with my coal shovel and I feed my furnace. That's the yeah. way it's always gonna be.